This is the SVS SB3000, a subwoofer that, quite frankly, has received a lot of praise. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to share some information with you guys about this sub, then I'm going to talk to you, of course, about how it performs. But first, I need to lay down a couple important disclaimers, starting with number one. If you're a home theater enthusiast, then honestly, you're not going to find this video very useful because I'm only going to talk about this sub as it relates to two-channel stereo performance. If you're looking for that kind of information, then I would encourage you to check out Youth Man and That Home Theater Guy or Majestex because they've already done a good job of covering this product from that angle. And then number two, I know a lot of people in sub reviews are looking for frequency response graphs and comparisons, and quite frankly, I'm not going to be able to do that for you. All I'm going to be able to do is to talk about how I think this sub performs into two-channel stereo applications. So with those disclaimers out of the way, let's get to the review. Okay guys, so here it is and look. There's a lot of information to go over, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break everything down into sections. First, I'm going to go over a little bit of history with you guys about SVS. Then I'm going to share some information about the design goals and the features of the SB3000. Then I'm going to talk about how it performs. So yeah, let's get right to it. All right, so one of the initial questions that I had for my contact at SVS is, what does SVS even stand for? And I was told that they're the initials of the original founders, only he couldn't remember what their names were. In fact, I'm supposed to be getting that information soon, so in case you're curious about it, just click on the description box below and I have it down there. Meanwhile, I'm gonna call out my contact. Nick, dude, what do they even pay you for? Anyways, moving on, the story behind SVS is actually pretty simple. They were founded in the early 2000s by two guys in a garage in Youngstown, Ohio, who said, hey, we want to build subwoofers that's going to compete with the big boys. And it's the classic success story because now here they are. And that's going to be my smooth transition to the SB3000. All right, so getting right to it, the SB3000 is a compact sealed subwoofer that's designed to satisfy home theater enthusiasts who are limited on space and or music lovers who want something that offers deep, strong, yet precise bass. And in order to do this, they had a number of challenges. First and foremost, they knew they wanted something that was compact. They also knew that they wanted something that was, in their words, indestructible. It had to be strong enough to satisfy home theater lovers, while at the same time being precise enough to satisfy discerning two-channel enthusiasts. And this is more or less what they ended up with. And it all starts with picking a cabinet. And what they ended up with is a cabinet that's almost 18 inches in depth, a little over 15 inches in height, and a little over 15 inches in width. And of course, they had to turn their attention towards the woofer. Now, instead of using something like a classic 12-inch woofer, they decided, no, we need a little bit more radiating surface area than that so it could hit harder and dig a little bit lower. So they had this 13-inch driver custom made purposely to fit this cabinet. And I asked about what its X-Max was, and they responded saying it was a nice 45 millimeters, which is pretty respectable. This can move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the sub around so you can look at what's on the back. We'll go over some features and then I'm going to throw some boring specs your way. Okay, so here we are, and there's a lot to go over here, so let me just dive straight into it. And I think the best place to begin is with the amplifier, because with a sealed sub like this, you need a lot of power, and indeed, this amplifier delivers quite a bit of it. It's an 800-watt amplifier that's capable of delivering 2,500 watts peak. Now, this is going to be a Class D design, but SVS said, no, nah, we want a little bit more of that Class AB sound, so they put MOSFETs in there, and that does a pretty good job of maintaining the kind of character that a lot of people like out of Class AB amplifiers. Now let's go over to features. First we have a little input here for a wireless card in case you want to go that route. We have our classic RCA's inputs, outputs, our LFE, and you're going to notice Bluetooth. This is actually Bluetooth capable and one of the selling points behind this subwoofer is that when you buy it you can download an app that will connect directly from your phone to the subwoofer and this will allow you to make precise adjustments with the low pass filter, with the phase, and I would love to show you it except let me show you this. I can't because ain't no app downloading to this. So instead, I would encourage you to check out OCD Hi-Fi Guy. He did a review of this subwoofer and he showed off the app. It seems to be pretty intuitive. Anyways, moving on, this is gonna be our low pass filter. This is gonna be our phase. It'll go from zero to 180 and there's really precise steps here. So you can really dial this in. And in case you're wondering how to actually set up your subwoofer in your system, in the description box below are gonna be some tips from SVS that'll hopefully help out 
As you can imagine, there's gonna be built-in DSP here to help give you the best response. Then here we're gonna have our IEC plug and that's pretty much it. So uh, let me wrap this up with some boring specs. You know guys, I just realized that I already covered most of the major specifications. There's only a few things that I'm missing, so yeah, let's get to that now. Starting with number one, the weight. The subwoofer weighs just a little bit over 50 pounds, and honestly, while that's solid, it's not exactly back-breaking. Number two, this is a true subwoofer. It'll dig all the way down to 18 hertz and possibly even lower in some rooms. And just imagine that, a subwoofer that can actually hit subsonic frequencies. And then number three, this retails for $1,000, meaning it's not exactly cheap and if you want this luxurious gloss black finish well then you need to add another hundred dollars to the price and it's also going to be a great choice for people who like dust and fingerprints nah, i'm kidding this is actually a really good look anyways now that we got all this information out of the way we can finally talk about how it sounds okay so this is gonna be one of the most criminally short evaluations that I'll probably ever post at Zero Fidelity just because it's a subwoofer. There's really only so much to say. I mean, most of what I'm listening for is taking place at or below 100 Hertz. And it becomes a matter of, well, does the sub pair well with speakers or not? Does it hit hard or not? Does it have good tone or not, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the best way to begin this is to share my previous experience with SVS subwoofers with you guys, just to give you all some context as to where I'm coming from. So my experience with SVS subwoofers actually began not long after the company got its start because at the time they only had three products in their portfolio, three cylindrical tubes. And at the time they were getting rave, just positively rave reviews. And when I started to experience them in different systems, whether it's home theater rigs or stereo systems, I remember thinking, wow, these, oh my God, they rumble and man, do they hit low, but I can't say I liked them with music. I felt like they were voiced for home theater. I felt like they had a lot of boom to them, but not a whole lot of refinement or tone. And as the years went on, they started introducing box solutions. I heard those and I felt more or less the same way. I was like, these are really good subs. And I recommended them all the time to my buddies who were into multi-channel listening. But for critical listeners, I would always recommend subs from the companies like REL or REL, however you want to pronounce it, right? And that leads me to the SB3000. When this came my way, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, I knew it would be good. It would just be a matter of, would it be something that I would like to use? So when I hooked it up to the system, I actually had the mono price speakers up, which would probably be the biggest challenge because they roll off sharply at 80 Hertz. And for a subwoofer, I mean, that's kind of high the reach. And to be honest, I was stunned, absolutely stunned by how naturally this speaker paired up to the mono price uh, speakers or this sub, Jesus, I'm losing my mind here. Anyways, you get what I'm laying down. It was a really good match and it was pretty much my first shot. Like most people, I had the gain set just a little bit too high on the sub, but nonetheless, I mean, it was a beautiful match. Just absolutely stunning. And as I went through different speakers, like the Mistral Audio Bow A2 Towers that I have, the Bacart S400s and S300s, the Klipsch RP600Ms, etc., etc., it was the same story every single time. It was a good match. And more importantly, not only was it a good match in terms of integration, but it was great in terms of tone. And I, you guys know me, I am big on tone. So when it comes to tracing like bass notes on whatever jazz recording, right? Uh, it did a great job. There was proper weight, there was proper speed. Yeah, I do feel like this sub benefits from being under, or I should say on top of a solid platform. In my room, having it just directly on the ground, it just resonates just a little bit too much with the flooring. But on a good foundation, it's like, yeah, I, I didn't find that there was ever an issue. With uh, dynamic passages from classical music, I felt like it kept up just fine. I don't listen at loud volume, so I can't tell you guys what that's like, but I feel like one of the most challenging genres of music for a sub is actually actually metal because you have a kick drummer just going crazy and quite frankly if the sub isn't quick it's just gonna sound like a muddy mess and the SVS just handled it and it handled it very well now I don't know how it sounds for theater but I think for music it's good it's it's very good I can see why so many people like this sub and I don't know guys that's about all I can come up with in terms of the evaluation of how it performs I think it's a good performer I don't think it's perfect though so yeah let's get to that 
So as with every hi-fi component that exists on planet Earth, there's no one solution that's going to make everybody happy. And at $1,000, I could see plenty of people saying, Psh, yeah, for that kind of money, I'm going to get this big subwoofer that offers a lot more boom boom. And I think that is completely legitimate. If that's what you're after, then yeah, there's definitely plenty of options out there to include other options from SVS's own lineup. But I think when you step back and look at it for what it is, it's a very good sub. In fact, the only legitimate complaint I have is that whenever I plug it into a wall and turn it on, doesn't matter the outlet, I notice noise coming from the back of the plate amp. And one of the things I'm really sensitive to is the noise of transformer hum and or the sound of fans running in the background. And while this isn't noticeable when music is playing, I could notice it even up to six to seven feet away when it was dead silent in the room. And I think this is worth mentioning, especially to folks who, like me, may be sensitive to this kind of noise. Otherwise, though, I have no real complaints. The only other point in notation is at $1,000, I think it's a good value, but clearly it's out of the reach of many individuals. Adding to that is the fact that subs tend to sound best when you buy them in pairs, meaning that if you want the best experience, you're going to want to get two of these things, meaning it's now a $2,000 investment or $2,200 if you want the gloss finish. And even if there is a discount available when you buy them in pairs, that's still a lot of money. But if you're somebody who can afford it and you really Really love your base, then I can see you being happy with the purchase. And that leads me to my final thoughts. So this is going to be a pretty short conclusion. The SVS SB3000. It only has one job to do and it does it very well. Now I can't comment on how it sounds with home theater and I don't listen at super loud volume so I can't tell you if it's really indestructible. I'm definitely not the guy to test that. But what I can say is that it's going to make for a very easy recommendation to critical listeners who want something that's quick and tight and precise and has good tone. It's easy to match with a wide variety of speakers. If you want that and you have the ability to afford one or more of these subs, yeah, definitely give it a shot. Anyways, guys, that's just it for me. Personally speaking, I can usually get away with listening to my music without a sub just fine, but let's face it, bass is a huge part of the music listening experience, and once I tied this into my computer setup, I said, you know what, SVS, I hate you guys. I don't want to live without it now. So uh, yeah, that's where I stand. Anyways, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.